How's it going? So this is a video on reality and this is a fascinating subject for me at the moment. It, it's all consuming and I'd say I'm still in the middle of it. Well, maybe I'll always be in the middle of it. It's always going to be evolving and our understanding is always going to change. So I've written three articles on this. So years and years ago, I had a technique that was taught to me of removing fears and resentments from our consciousness. So it encouraged self-observation and we would write down and we would list our fears and we would ask God to remove them and so on. So I was used to that process. It worked. It helped me to observe myself. It didn't remove the fears and resentments or that wasn't my experience. It, it did help to take them out of my mind. It helped to, re to gain a release temporarily. Fast forward years and years and years and you know now we were told you know we create our re reality and you spot it you've got it and we're a reflection of other people or they're a reflection of us and so on. And then a friend a few years ago presented me with Ho'oponopono which is I haven't taken a Ho'oponopono Pono 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 class. I've watched some videos read a book on it, read some articles, that's kind of it. Um, but I don't believe that any labelled technique has a monopoly on on any of these practices. They're just, you know, there's a lot of groups that use similar techniques and views, they just name them differently. So Ho'oponopono is about basically cleaning, again observing our consciousness and healing or cleaning, or loving, releasing, remotion, emotional reaction to the situation. In recent ceremonies, really, I have been shown more so, and outside of ceremonies, I should say, you know, in my meditations, or just in my, I'm being seated, you know, receiving downloads, or receiving information, receiving awareness of what is this place, and what's the purpose of, everything why is why is everything here in this manner more and more i'm being shown that everything really is a mirror reflection of my own vibration you know for a long time i was unsure if other people exist or if it's just me if i'm in the virtual virtual reality world if if i'm sitting somewhere in a room with a headset on none of you exist and I'm just playing a computer game this is my world and all this stuff reacts with my vibration and so on so now I'm at the awareness that I do think that you exist that other people exist but the only way I can explain it is that I feel it's like everybody if you imagine everyone as like a multifaceted diamond loads and loads of different sides at any given moment I'm vibrating you know, at a certain frequency, up, down, do, 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 different levels. And each of those facets of each person has many different vibrations. As I vibrate at whatever frequency I'm, you know, as I have different thoughts and process different thoughts and feelings on different days and going up and down, I'm higher, I'm higher, I'm higher, I'm lower, lower, lower. As I'm doing that, every single person around me and everything that enters my consciousness is matching my frequency. So yes, you all exist, but you are mirroring and reflecting and sending back to me a reflection of my vibration. Now, this rules out the kind of co-creation. The terminology really makes it all very confusing. I do believe in co-creation that I am creating my reality as are each of us and we've chosen to be here at this time and to experience the world as it is at this present moment and whatever changes are afoot but I am responsible for how I react to everything and I'm responsible for in a sense for everything that enters my consciousness depending on my vibration it's a, it's a gift it's an incredible gift, but it's suffocating at the same time to be awakened to this because for the last 
few weeks, I'm seeing it more and more. For the last day or two days, I'm immersed in it. And I can see everything is a reflection of my vibration. The beauty of that is that I can see by looking outwards, I can see in, I can see where I'm at. The traffic is heavy. If kids are screaming, if there are annoying people around me, well, it's just, it's telling me how I am. It's telling me what is askew, if you like, within me or what needs attention, what requires attention and healing. And if everything is blissful, then it's all good. My vibration is good and I'm good. Not that there is any good or bad, (laughs) because they are constructs. (laughs) But you know what I mean. So a few weeks ago, a friend sent me a video by Bashar. Bashar is a channeled being from, I think, 300 years in the future. And Bashar talks about, I'll put a link below, he talks about you know that there is no out there everything is in here and everything is just a reflection of us so that helped to push me a bit further into contemplating this and seeing where these views can go i i feel that stillness is extremely important for me and for probably for anyone who if you've got this far anyone who who listens to my videos just being in now i know there's mindfulness there you could there's probably Zen words, there's all sorts of other spirituality words, I just tend to use stillness, just being in the body, being in the senses, being completely present, being out of the mind, out of the ego, the monkey mind, being still, and it's not easy, but, you know, we can train the brain bit by bit to come back, and we can lose it again, we go off into, as we, as the mind gears up again, but through that stillness, when we look around, you know, I can see people and I can see they're, reflect- they're reflecting me. Some I don't, you know, some I don't understand it or I don't know. It doesn't matter. There's no need to get into it. I only get into it if there is a charge, if there's an energetic or an emotional charge. So if I feel annoyed or impatient or irritable or distracted or whatever it is, because of the traffic or the people or that guy in the queue in front of me or whatever, then it's like, okay, why? You know, and rather than blaming him or looking at him, I observe my own core, really, my own energetic core, and I can feel it, say, between kind of my stomach, solar plexus, chest. It might be in all three of those. It could be in one of those. I can feel that energy, and I just observe that energy, and... I speak to it and I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for this feedback to be shown this vibration that is within me. And I love it. I don't necessarily know where it came from or why it's within me. It doesn't really matter. But I'm grateful for it and I embrace it. I love it as a piece of me. See, we're conditioned to love the things we like and not love and run away from and avoid and be ashamed of the things within us that we don't like. So it's teaching me to love what I previously disliked, what I would deem to be unacceptable or unspiritual or unhealthy or, you know, anything negative. There is no negative. It's all good. It's all just feedback. It's all just experience and energy that we've come here to have. In a recent ceremony, I was shown a contract I had or have, a soul contract I have with someone in this life and some of the things that we did to each other, dark things in previous lives. And The purpose is that we play both sides of it. You know, we become the victim and we become the perpetrator to experience both sides of it. So neither is wrong, neither is bad. So now we look out in the world and we see the victims and we we run out to help the victims. Some of us do, some of us don't. But it's, it's, it's a tricky line because by saying don't help the victims or, you know, they've chosen this experience, people think you're saying oh don't help them how dare you (laughs) how dare you leave them the homeless people or the 
the people to be killed by Trump's bombs or Obama's bombs. I'm not saying that. So I'm going to avoid that subject. If you don't get me, I could spend a long time trying to explain myself. And if you do get me, great, let's keep going. We have chosen and invited these experiences often, if not always, with the people who do these things to us. For our own spirit to experience this, perhaps suffering or pain, to make us more compassionate, empathetic to people who suffer, and to be a bit wiser so that we can communicate with them and understand their place. So there's a lesson in it, there's growth in it, we can't really know joy without knowing darkness or depression or a bit of pain. You can really appreciate what it's like to have a peaceful day or to feel good if you've really, if you've really known dark times, depression. So the same goes for all these so-called crimes that we see. To, to experience both sides of it and the pain involved from both sides, you know, the, the perpetrator suffers too, it's not just the victim. But there's growth, there's awareness, you know, we do silly things and stupid things and we make mistakes. But there are ultimately no mistakes. It's all a learning experience and it's all being, we're growing from all of it. We're experiencing and evolving from all of it. To begin doing this has become at times quite frightening because there are moments of shock. You know, there are frightening moments that, oh my God, this is my reality. You know, I've had this for 20 plus years, you know, since I started meditating, I'd get moments where I'd say, you know, it reminds me of the talking head song, You May Find Yourself, you know, and I'd, I'd I know that's not, not the name of the song, but I'd, I would walk down the road and I'd kind of go, oh my God, I'm here, wow. And I'd, I'd just become present and I could see like I'm on earth, I'm in a body and this is weird, but now I'm getting it much deeper and uh, from a, an emotional core level. Seeing the coupling, I suppose, that I'm here in this physical plane or supposed physical third dimension. I can see these things. I can see this reflection of my vibration, which in my head from my ego is not suitable because it should be much more sunny and I should be more wealthy, and I should be happier and more handsome, and all of these things that my ego construct wants. I want the world to be the way I want it to be. So I break through that and I realize, Jesus Christ, this is my life. <laughs> and it is shocking because I feel it and I feel the that pain, you know, from perhaps many lifetimes, that pain that the ego is masking and hiding and denying constantly through all the chatter and all the talk and all the distractions and addictions and busyness and all that shit that can just kind of keep, keep the pain at bay. And to break through that is initially quite unpleasant, uh, only for a moment doesn't feel nice but then there's a calm and there's an acceptance you know to love it and appreciate that this is my vibration I'm grateful to be shown this vibration of who I am at this time or or a, a fragment of who I am at this time and the reflection this physical reflection of my energy so there's gratitude there and there's love there and appreciation for to be shown this, to be able to see this, to have this feedback available to me and to love it as my creation. I'll give you a little example. Just a moment ago, a Porsche Macan S, metallic grey paint just drove past me with 19 inch alloy wheels. <laughs> I love Porsches. I, I love the engineering. I love the power. I've never owned one. Uh, I think they're beautiful. I love anything that's done well, that, that humans put their energy into to create, you know, a work of art and to, to do properly. So this Porsche drives right past me, 
and previously I'd look at these cars and I think, "Why is that beautiful? Oh, I want that." Night, I'd I'd feel that desire, that lust in me for this. Now I see that there's a, an emotional response that I I wasn't previously unaware of. There's there is an emotional energy attached to that desire, which comes from a wanting, a yearning, a lack. A lack within my own spirit, my own heart. Perhaps that my own car is not good enough for me, that I that it's I feel shame or I feel I haven't achieved enough or I would be happier with, I would be better with. And really, it obviously it's not about the car at all. Either car. Although I still want the Porsche. <laughs> it's about that hole in my soul. It's about that hole, that unacknowledged pain from wherever, from whence ever, it doesn't really matter, that just is looking for acknowledgement and healing. And with that love and that healing, we can patch up, or I can patch up that, that bit of the heart just a little bit more. So by acknowledging, first of all, my physical reflection that my energy is drawn in of this car I'm then I'm then I then turn my focus internally to my wherever you may feel in your body and I feel it in my chest solar plexus and I realize there's a lack there and by healing that lack by loving that lack by be, being grateful for the reflection and the information by loving that space and saying you know I'm I'm I see I understand it's okay everything is perfect as I am I gradually fill up that void and I need that car or money or woman or food or whatever it is experience less and less and become a little bit more at peace where I am right now so I hope that might be of use to some people or of interest and there, I'm sure there'll be more stuff on this topic. So be free to sign up to the newsletter. I'll put a link below to uh, subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment if you have any thoughts. Thanks for listening.